Welcome to this uh, presentation on evolution by natural selection. We're going to begin by talking about the process of selection in general, and then we're going to focus more on how natural selection works according to Darwin. So one of the things that I find when it comes to teaching natural selection is that because natural selection is a process and that it occurs in nature, it's best understood by using case studies, by using real examples. And we have just an untold number of examples of natural selection occurring in the natural world and in the laboratory. And so I'm going to use an example of Katie Dids as a case study on how natural selection occurs. So this is a Katie Did. This is a Katie Did you might see in your backyard. Some of you may have seen them before. They're green. They're very good at camouflaging their bodies. Um, they look a little bit like crickets or grasshoppers, and this is what you would see if you were to see them normally in your backyard. They like to hang out on green plants where their body blends in very well to their background. They're very well camouflaged. But what most people don't know is that katydids actually come in more than one variety. Um, as a result of mutation, some katydids are yellow and look a little bit like this, and others are actually even pink. Um, and all these varieties are all members of the same species so they're all um, they're all the same population but that population shows variation just as the population of bean seeds showed variation in the variation lab you did in the last lesson and so that's some background you need to understand what we're going to do next. okay now before we begin talking about natural selection specifically we're going to talk about I would like you to understand what selection is in general so if we if we think about katydids or we think about any animal that has variation selection is simply um, the the process which drives evolution in species and selection requires that there be something in the environment that picks certain individuals and if we're using katydids something which picks certain individuals to survive and reproduce and when you go out and see katydids almost all the katydids you see look like this they're almost all green in fact if any of you have ever seen a pink or a yellow katydid you're very lucky because I spent a lot of time outside and I uh, I've never had the the opportunity to see one um, though once I found out about them I've, I have spent some time looking for them when they're out in the, the late summer um, another way to think of selection is that it's described as differential reproductive success it's anything which causes things to reproduce at different rates and have different success rates in that reproduction this is one of those phrases in biology that I love because the words give the definition uh, you know give the definition differential so there's different success in reproduction and so in this case green katydids have differential reproductive success compared to the yellow or the pink when it happens over time evolution occurs and because the green katydids reproduce more they have better reproductive success then they in turn become the most common members of the population and we have genetic change over time which is the definition of evolution so natural selection is one kind of selection. It's the selection that Darwin described. It's not the only thing that can select certain individuals for differential reproductive success, but it's the one that happens the most in the natural world. And it has three components, three things that occur as part of the process that we're going to go through in this case study. First, there has to be variation that is heritable. You know, this is inherent to evolution. It's also inherent to the process of natural selection, or any selection for that matter. Uh, the second is that there has to be a struggle for survival and then certain individuals have to be more likely to reproduce than others as a result of that struggle for survival this is what sets up the differential reproductive success that is the hallmark of selection so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take each of those three components of natural selection and go into a little bit more detail the first one is review from the last lesson which is that there has to be variation in species and we've already talked about where variation comes from and that it has to be inheritable it comes from mutations in the DNA in this case study we have three different genes that have been created by those mutations creating three different proteins with three different color traits green yellow and pink so um, as a result of those mutations we have variation within this population of katydids 
And it's that variation that the second component is going to start working on. So the second component of natural selection is that individuals are going to be struggling for survival. So here we have some just pictures of our katydids. Let's imagine this is our katydid population. Uh, in Elm Creek Park, for instance, or wherever. And each of these katydids is going to be, um, is part of the population, but, they're, but they exhibit variation. We have mostly green katydids because they're the most common. And now these katydids are going to struggle. There's two kinds of struggle for survival, or two main kinds. First, the struggle of not being killed or eaten, and second is the struggle for resources. So katydid populations, they do struggle for resources and getting enough food, but their primary struggle, at least in this case study, is going to be a struggle against a predator not being eaten. And here we have, I believe, uh, I think this is a kingbird here, and kingbirds certainly like to eat katydids, and that's kingbird is eating a katydid there in this in this picture. Um, so let's imagine these katydids are struggling. So our population is going to start getting eaten by this this bird and the bird will come in and it'll pick out certain katydids and it'll eat those and as it's going around picking up food it's going to notice the yellow ones and the pink ones a little bit more often than it'll notice the green ones it'll so certainly grab a green one every once in a while but the pink and the yellow are going to be more noticeable and hence more likely to get eaten now we're going to use all these katydids because they're going to become our population for the third component so that struggle for survival, oops, I didn't mean to have that up there. That struggle for survival is what's going to set up our third um, part of natural selection in our case study of, of Katie did. So we have our population that survived being eaten that's going to be able to go on to reproduce. These individuals are the ones that are going to get to leave behind offspring. You know, they're going to pair up. They're going to mate with each other. Their genes are going to become the genes that create the next generation of katydids. And, and here is the real, the real heart of it. Here is why most of the katydids that we see are green. This is why the, what the case study is about, why katydids are green. Those individuals that get more resources, or in this case of selection, are not killed, are going to produce more children. They're going to pass on more DNA to the next generation. And so we see we've got a lot more green katydids. These are the katydids that are going to pass on their DNA. And this is why the DNA that creates green katydids is more common. So the end result of those three steps of their var being variation and a selection process, as certain individuals tend to survive over time, is that in the next generation of katydids, certain traits will tend to be more common over time. So here's our population of katydids that survived the struggle, at least the struggle to survive against the bird. There's still some yellow genes in there. It's these katydids that will produce the next generation, that will create the overall population in the next generation. We notice that there are still yellow katydids, but compared to the population before, green is the more common color within the population. And this is the end result of natural selection, of those three processes of there being variation, a struggle, and then differential reproductive success. Is it because individuals that carry the beneficial genes have more children, their children will also have the beneficial genes leading to genetic change in the population. Genes for green katydids are now more common. That's a genetic change in the group as a whole. Now, it is possible that at some time in the future, mutations that lead to yellow or pink katydids might have an advantage. Um, maybe there are more plant, yellow plants in the environment for whatever reason, or the soil is, is yellower and katydids can hide against those. In that situation, yellow might have an advantage, or for some reason, pink might have an advantage, and we would start to see, again, a change over time as those individuals were favored in the struggle for survival. Uh, sometimes it's called survival of the fittest, but favored in that struggle for survival. And then their genes would become the genes that were more common in the population. So in your assessments on natural selection, you're essentially going to be asked to apply the principles to a case study, at least for the higher level questions. Here's our four principles that all living things have variation, that they struggle, and that certain individuals leave more offspring. And then the end result, 
that certain traits become more common. I'd like you to try to apply these principles that are true for everything that undergoes natural selection to the case of the katydids. How would you explain how katydids have genetic variation? How would you explain that living that katydids struggle for survival? How would you explain which katydids produce more offspring and why? And how would you explain the end result? Pause the video now, answer that question, and then we'll come back and I'll show you the answers. So take a moment to look this over and see if this matches kind of how you answered those principles or applied them. So all living things have genetic variation. Well, Katie dids have genes that produce different colored traits. Maybe you talked about proteins or mutations in their DNA. Living things struggle for survival. Well, they're constantly competing. And I gave examples of what they're competing for, like resources. But for the katydids in particular, they're attempting to avoid getting eaten. And their color directly affects how likely they are to get eaten by that bird. And then the last point, that certain individuals are going to tend to leave more offspring. Well, green katydids are better camouflaged. So in each generation, uh, more of the green ones will survive being eaten by birds. So we're going to have more green katydids reproducing each year. I would have loved to see you use the phrase differential reproductive success in this section or perhaps in the last section where we talk about the result of those first three things, which is that because more individuals with genes that produce green color are in the population that reproduces, the green trait becomes the most common. And this explains why we see green katydids. So the theory of evolution tells us why we see green katydids without ever having to be about katydids specifically.